Our next speaker is Nuria Aguilar. She's the Quality Management System Administrator for EPE Industries, USA Incorporated. She's a bilingual executive with over 15 years of supply chain manufacturing and quality experience with increasing responsibility in the automotive, electrical, aerospace, information technology and services, machinery, mechanical, engineering, vinyl windows, doors, and packaging industries. Lots of experience. Nuria is a certified AS9100 and ISO 9001 lead auditor, and she has experience in negotiating commercial contracts. She is persuasive, determined, and conscientious, and she's enthusiastic, loyal, self-motivated, and flexible within our ever-changing business landscape. Maria will be presenting quality as a change management tool. So welcome to the conference, Maria. Wonderful, we can see it. All right, perfect. Welcome everybody, good morning. Um, first of all, thank you ASQ for having me. Congratulations to Teresa and Rajiv. I listened to your presentation and I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, so when I was invited to be a speaker here, um, I was told that the team, the, the subject is going to be reinventing quality. And I was thinking, well, why we don't reinvent the company through quality? So that's why I decided to speak about quality as a change, change management tool. First of all, we can talk about the COVID effects and the adapt to change that has been happening on those aspects. So the source materials and services reduced availability and increased commodity prices. Supply chain disruptions happened and companies have been working for, looking for alternative plans for corrective measures. Increased inventory levels sometimes could be the solution. However, the size of the investment is proportional to the risk. You have to have that in, in mind and quality is um, part of that um, support for analysis on that. Minimized or eliminated customer demand and weakened profitability. Um, on that one, it's very interesting because companies shifted resources and processes to self-sufficiently produce now masks, sanitizers, healthcare equipment, or many others that are supporting this uh, pandemic. The motivated team members, it happens. It is uh, unfortunately, I think, something that is even currently going on. Reduced hours, increased responsibilities and workload, remote work settings, poor low people. Um, on this one, I will elaborate a little bit more. Furthermore, uh, I see Keith Page or Pachi. He has been or she has been asking for online collaboration. I'll speak about that. Recognize internal efforts and loyalty. People, we are putting our efforts and our best um, sense of urgency and sense of collaboration to this environment, and we have to recognize that. Team building activities, don't, don't forget about those. Let's, let's make it happen. Regulations and compliance, they have been higher and more strict lately. On the company, we have the new safety protocol, we call it, and it's sanitizing, disinfecting, temperature screening, wearing the mask, and definitely document all your regulatory information no codes, props, internal standards, follow government mandates, in this case, for example, the temperature screening and uh, mask wearing. This is the slide that I would like to spend a little bit more time. Um, this is the PDCA, which is the Deming cycle. Uh, this is, is, is the foundation of ISO, the ISO uh, standard, the 9001-2015, I'll show it up. Um, and then uh, we do the plan. We are facing change. So believe it or not, sometimes we plan the change. We always fear change because we think that it's unexpected, but sometimes we do plan the change. So that's why I'm saying that we are maybe reinventing the industry or the company or the world in general through quality in companies. Determining attainability, anticipate the change, identify the need, problem. <sighs> With problem, I have a problem <laughs> with that word. For me, I see problems as opportunities. And we're always looking or seeking for chances 
I think is what helps with the way we approach this change. Do, definitely, perform the change, implement the change, manage the change. In products, processes, policies, flowchart, organizational chart, the whole organization, a reengineering, it's a word that it has been going on since the 90s, move to another building or location, so the premises changed as well. Check, verify effectiveness, evaluate results, outcomes of those changes, and maybe start all over again and implement another change. Act, based on results, keep the change, change again, adapt, modify, etc. And I'm showing also the change manage management process in seven steps and the seven R's of change management, which is who raised the change, what is the reason of the change, what return is required from the change, what are the risks involved in the change, what resources are required to deliver the change, who is responsible to the build, test, and implement portion of the change or the whole change, what is the relationship between this change and maybe other changes, and how is triggering another change, right? Here is what I wanted to show um, with the ISO. So the numbers between parentheses is the number of the clause. Hello? All right. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. There's a right. noise on the back. Yes. Um, uh, I see Savnit Chima. Can you mute yourself, please? All right, so um, as I was saying, uh, the representation of the structure of ISO is through the PDCA cycle, the Deming cycle, and the numbers between parentheses are the clauses of the actual ISO standard. I will elaborate a little bit more in another slide about, about it. <clears throat> this one. Okay, but why quality? What does quality have to do with all of this, with change? The benefits of having a uh, quality management system, your company doesn't need to be ISO certified, but just by having a quality management system, your company can be ISO compliant. So it, it's, it's the two uh, considerations that you can have in, in regards to approaching with ISO. Sometimes I have noticed that people fear ISO as well because it's strict, because you have to demonstrate that what you are saying that you are doing, you have to show evidence and all that. Just simplify your um, QMS and that will help you with being compliant, which I will mention as well, uh, furthermore. So the QMS supports managing the change, again, personal positions, the P's, I call them the P's, EPPs, personal positions, products, premises, processes, etc. Cost savings, believe it or not, quality supports cost savings because maybe changing through quality, you can improve and you can uh, do something simply, simpler and you're going to be able to handle it. Now, what is the cost of no quality? And on this one I call the re, recalls, reworks, replacements, reinspection, and the reputation of the company sometimes gets hurt because your customers will, will not buy from you anymore or will, won't trust you as they used to or something like that. And nobody wants that. So it's, it's all the benefits of performing quality in all aspects of a company. Labor, logistics, material. Customer satisfaction or in the reputation, uh, confidence of your customers, increased credibility. Employee motivation, boosts morale, because you certify people, you train people, you see their strengths, and maybe you can relocate them organizationally, which also is, goes to promote organizational innovation. They bring ideas, they seek for solutions, they own. Um, on lean manufacturing, quality is also supporting, as I said, simplifying, um, there is also value stream mapping. There are Gemba walks that you can uh, go around on your shop floor and uh, just by observing the, the stream of, of, or the flow of your processes, 
you can find solutions to. Um, I already mentioned training, recognition, team building, nonconformity triggers, promotes a corrective action. And regularly, that corrective action is change. So we have change embedded in quality on the day-by-day -day basis. And um, with this, I just want to bring in, into the attention of the listeners right now that let's not fear for change. Change is a solution. Make your quality system and processes structure lean. And I kept the word lean because and the structure of your processes in quality and ISO and the QMS and all that, you use processes, SOPs, forms, etc. And sometimes they are integrated in a way that if one changes, you have to change everything. And it causes like a domino effect. So it's what I am suggesting to try to avoid as much as possible. If you change something, it's straightforward, it was just one change and didn't cause an effect on having to change more stuff. Flexible, changeable, adaptable. Monitor, prevent, project, the change, KPIs, and I put that on both. My next slide speaks of that. Audits, objectives, statistics, finance, operations, human resources. Everything is considered and everything is supported through quality. Like KPIs, key performance indicators. And I found this new term, they are using it as OKRs, which is objectives and KPIs or key results. Uh, for me, actually, it's kind of like the same. KPIs or objectives, I can use them as the same on the standpoint of measuring results. I like this. Um, I put some images. I am very graphic, so make the goals clear. What, even where, when, how, by whom, and so you have the lighthouse, the map, and all hands. You have make goals inspiring. Why don't make our people feeling the hero of the day? And I, I'm a geek. I like comics and all that. So that's pretty cool. And I would feel motivated if someone in the upper management would tell me, Nuria, we're looking for you to be the hero of today, which I hope I, I'm the hero every day. <laughs> make goals public. Talk about it. Embed them in their brains. Have them to be processed in a way that everybody will be communicated, informed, and moving towards the, the same direction. Always measure process. Put it in the balance. Account it. Measure it. Uh, make, it make graphics if you want. Um, whatever also upper management seeks for what is uh, representative for them. Um, the president of the company that I currently work for, he likes PowerPoint presentations. So for my management review, for my risk management, for whatever meeting I have with upper management, I do a PowerPoint presentation. So that works for upper management. Adjust to that and do it. Failure happens. So we go down, you get alerted, but then you action it and in, as a team go back again. Now, the methodology or the, the structure or the way to establish these KPIs and objectives is the SMART um, uh, methodology, which is being specific, what exactly we are seeking for. Measurable, you have to be able to measure the results. Attainable is not a, an impossible dream. Relevant, so what uh, uh, supports the company, actually, and the operations of it. Time base. Time base is due dates and also even periodicity. How often you are going to measure if it is every month, every quarter, yearly, comparison, etc. All right, okay. This is the coolest slide of my presentation and is the EPE model. EPE is a company, as I said, that I work for. We do protective packaging solutions. And uh, actually, our motto is saving our world, world one package at a time. We are seeking to protect equipment, but also seeking not to have to create a lot of waste, which is the important part. So we have products that are not only recyclable, they are reusable, repurposable. 
So it's it's something that I will invite you to take a look at, and I'll show the website at the end of the presentation. So this is the EPE model. Actually, currently, through COVID and with some changes that we have implemented and we're working on, we're a multi-site. We have different warehouses throughout the U.S., ISO certification, and the audits recently, internal and external, most of them were virtual, some of them were on-site. The standardization of processes and forms. We use the same process and the same form throughout all the sites. No different forms of the same process or uh, flowchart in different sites. We have the incoming, in process, and outgoing inspections, and processes and form, and it's the same one. We have suppliers review. Currently, we're doing it annually. Maybe we will do it more often. We are performing time studies for lane manufacturing to measure the uh, performance, etc. We have the KPIs. On the KPIs, we only have three KPIs for quality. On-time delivery, cars, which we um, count as customer complaints, and we handle them through AD reports. I can elaborate more on this if you have questions, maybe towards the end of the presentation or maybe even later. Internal defects, so it's kind of like on-time delivery, external defects or external caught defects through our customers and internal defects caught in-house, which is what we are preferring. That's why we are also doing outgoing inspections. All hands meetings, we have virtually on a conference call, a uh, conversation with our president. The president of the company gave us the um, uh, the current situation of the company. Uh, we speak about uh, uh, human resources, finance, safety, quality, production, operations. What are we doing and how are we doing on all the aspects of the company? We have weekly one-on-ones. Every Monday I meet with each manager of each site and we go through whatever um, we need to review in, in regards to quality. Monthly corporate communication, I, it's kind of like a newsletter, but it's, I'm sending an email every mid of the month, and it's what's happening at EPE quality. And I give the happening of maybe even lessons learned that happen in one site but can help the other side. Team building activities. I love this. That's, that's why I really like this slide. This is um, the... Uh, the upper corner or the right part of the slide, right portion of the slide, it's a bunch of people. Okay. I covered some faces because they are minors, so for um, identity, respect, uh, or uh, purposes, and I am not disclosing the names, so I can like orange out the names and I covered some faces because it's actual families of our actual employees. They are my teammates. I am there with my boyfriend actually on the upper line of the collage in the middle, kind of. Um, so, seriously, this is people in design, production, finance, sales, um, engineering, uh, of course, quality. So, people that we were mailed a puzzle to our houses, and the team building event that the company made was Complete the puzzle with your family. Snap a shot. Uh, um, yeah, snap a shot or take a picture, a selfie or whatever, and send it to us. Submit it, and we're going to give you a prize. So it was a grand prize who someone in Horn Lake, Mississippi won, and some gift cards that we won in Ponte Valley, Ontario, California, Houston, Union City, uh, Portland, and between Horn Lake and Atlanta. So this is this is honestly pretty cool. Um, remote work tools, so the question I, I saw being asked, you can use iCloud-based systems or platforms, VPN, Zoom, Microsoft Teams is actually what we are currently using in the company. I recently learned even an app in, in cell phones, which is Band, B-A-N-D, so and it's, I have seen that it's very interactive. So you can try that too. Um, streamlining, we are simplifying, as I said, uh, it's just one form, it's a straightforward, and it, it brings more efficiency to the operations. These 
it's in regards um, some of the books that I have been reading recently, and they speak about change, and also some models of uh, strategic management that I learned recently um, through different uh, webinars that I have been taking. I have been listening to some webinars um, or um, free Zooms meetings or master classes and all that. I am trying to learn with what is available right now, mostly mainly free, <laughs> I try to take advantage of that, but go on and um, inform yourself more, read, whatever. And um, oof, I'm over one minute, I think. All right, well, um, it's Management 3.0. It's an actual new methodology that is suggested by Jurgen Apello. And um, you can go ahead and learn more about it, maybe get the book or something. Who moved my cheese? That book has been also going on, I think, since the 90s as well. And it, it speaks about change and how facing the change. How to survive change you didn't ask for. It's an actual book. It's by MJ Ryan. And this one is more kind of like in the personal side, but I definitely think helps everybody to face change. This one is another one that this person, Kevin Elkenberry, he has a podcast. So maybe you can listen to the podcast and learn how to remotely lead and manage your teams. And uh, lastly, uh, again, I see the change as opportunities. This is kind of like my conclusion of my whole career, I would say. See change as opportunities. Change can be the solution of the problem, and that's why I underline both uh, words, because for me, problem is an opportunity. And I spoke about the piece. Focus on those piece, people, product and services, processes, premises. And the other one that has helped me, uh, I was a manager, uh, an HR manager a few years ago, and I developed my team keeping them with constant meetings, constant emails, but I kept them informed of everything. I I taught them how to run reports. I And sometimes they were telling me, oh, you're teaching me that because you don't want to do it and you want me to do it. And I was like, no, I just want you have to know how to do it in case I'm not here or whatever. And when I left the company, all of them went up on the organizational ladder, one level, each one of them. So I developed my team on the day-by-day -day basis with information. Information is power. So if you inform your employees, you are going to give them power, and that empowerment will turn on into accountability. They are going to own it. They are going to be responsible. They are going to bring ideas. Um, do not expect the same results if you do not modify the inputs. You keep thinking maybe why we are not improving, why we are, what, what is going on? And maybe it's because definitely you are not changing. If you want different results, you have to try different approaches. I already mentioned that. Lastly, these two phrases, well known. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Albert Einstein. And this one, I really like this one. This is, this is change. Nothing is lost. Nothing is created. Everything is transformed. That's the definition of change. And it happens every millisecond in our body, even. I'm done. I think I was over time a little bit. Hello? Hello, you can hear me? Yes. All right, thank you very much, Nuria. Um, it was a great presentation. Um, so, if uh, there are no questions, um, the only question I can see here is where can I find the QR code to scan? Oh. Uh, you can send that later if you yes. want. Okay. Wonderful. So Nuria will be uh, there after the break that we have 10.40 in case you have more questions for her. 
such as uh, include the questions in the text in the chat and she will answer them in the next break. Thank you very much, Nuria. Awesome presentation. Thank you. And uh, we'll go ahead for the next speaker.